Hello, this video is a tutorial on fork and exact by Sandy Xie and Kenny Liu. I'll show example codes using fork and exact, and with some introduction to wait. Let's start with fork. To see how to use fork, we can bring up the main page. To use fork, we need to include the library UniSTD. Fork return a PIDT. And thus, we need to create a PIDT in our code and call fork. In fact, fork return two times, one for the trial process and one for the parent process. For the trial process, the return value will be zero. For the parent process, the return value is the PID of the new process. Both processes copy the current process and will run in parallel. For a visual concept of how fork created two processes, Check out the video below. If fork fail, it will return negative one. Thus, we need to do error checking using pair in case fork fail. To use pair, we need to include the library stdio. I wrote some sample code here, asking the child process to print out its PID and the parent process to print out the parent's PID. To see that the parent's PID is the same as the new process PID, we can have an infinite loop inside the parent process. Let's try compile and run the program. While the infinite loop is happening, we can use Ctrl Z to bring the program to background. Then use the bash command ps to show the current processing processes. We can see that there are two a.out processes. The new process is this one, and we can see that its PID is the same as the PID printed by the parent process. Let's bring the program back and queue it. From the previous outputs, the parent printed first and then the child printed but the while loop inside the parent process was still running. What happened was the parent and the child processes ran together. We can handle the execution order of the processes by using wait. To see what is wait, let's bring up the main page. To use wait, we need to include two libraries, system type and system wait. Wait take in a parameter of a PID and return the terminated process PID. If wait fail, it will return negative one, and we need to do air checking using PR. In our code, we call wait with the child process PID, which is zero. When wait return negative one, we call PR. Let's run the program and see what happens. Now we can see that the parent process print after the child process. That's because we asked the parent process to wait for the child process to finish and then execute the parent process. After fork, let's look at exact. For this tutorial, we are using exact VP. Let's bring up the main page for exact. To use exact, we need to include the library UniSTD. So for exact VP, we take in the char star and the char star array. The char star is the command and the char star array is the arguments to the command. Exact VP return negative one when it fail. So we can do air checking using that condition for the system call. I had coded an array containing the command ls by turning the string ls into a C string because we are putting it into a char star array. I pass the first char star of the array as the first parameter to exact VP and the whole char star array as the second parameter. Let's compile and run. After we compile and run the program, we can see that the file printed exactly like how the bash command handled it. Let's open up the file again. It's important to have a node at the end of the array to tell exact function that's the end of your arguments. Let's see what happens if we don't have a node at the end of the array. Let's compile and run the code. 
After compile and run, we see that it prints out an error message because OS is trying to read from random memories. To see that exact VP takes in flags, let's try adding the dash L flag to the array. Here I coded the second element of the array to be dash L. Let's compile and run the program. We can see that the output is the same thing as the bash command ls-l. What happens if the command does not exist? Let's try putting in a random command, something like lss. Compile and run the program. Pierre gives us a message that exact vp fail. For the system call exact, it will actually terminate the current process. To show that, I coded a CL after I call exact VP. Let's run and compile the program. The line didn't print out because it's called after exact VP. Since exact VP terminated the process, the line never got executed. If we want the program to continue after running exec, we can use fork to create new process and call exec in that process. Here I have a program combining my first example of fork and my second example of exec VP. It forked it into two processes. In the trial, it will print out its PID and then call exec VP with LS. In the parent, it will print out the parent's PID. Let's run the program. It first print out the child's PID and then run LS and then print out the parent's PID. See that how this time code got executed after exact VP. That's because exact VP was called inside the trial process and after it got executed, it terminated the trial process only. When trial process got terminated, parent process will finish waiting the code inside parent can get executed. That's why and how to use exact VP and fork together. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hope you enjoy it.